If you're an Xbox console first or only gamer, the ninth generation has not been the most transparent for you. First, you were sold on hopes that the Xbox Series X would run at 40 to 50 frames higher than the PlayStation 5. Then you were told that the Series S at 300 USD would also outperform the PlayStation 5 in key areas, adding unparalleled value to pulling the casual gamer into this fantastic ecosystem, right? And, and you were told that the purchase of studios was to secure games exclusively for Game Pass, for you to pay, play on your console and enjoy that on your console as well as wherever else Game Pass was and to play those games day and date. All these promises in tandem sold you on a vision in which your $300 to $500 purchase would come with and maintain advanced perks, making your purchase specialized and all the more worth it. Well, in the words of the late great Charlie Murphy, er, wrong. Xbox is splitting ears performance wise versus PlayStation 5. The Series S has become a bottleneck for devs, including Xbox's own internal ones. And Game Pass exclusivity has gone the way of the dodo bird, with the console tier being flatlined for newbies the moment interesting games appear to be coming to the service. Is there any use of that Xbox console you have anymore? The answer is yes, but with caveats. We tackle all this in the next installment of The Spiel, our gaming hot topic video series. This is gonna be a special one. Let's get into it. Yeah. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, you name it, I am there. And we're back again with another episode of The Spiel. This is where we talk about the latest and greatest in the video game hot topic spear. And man, oh man, oh man, do we have a special one for you today. This one is titled Rant. Xbox gamers, keep your console relevant. But before we get into this one, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications, please. So you know when we're dropping these doses, we appreciate all of y'all straight up. That is the truth. All right, now let's get into this one because boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> this is with the Xbox Civil War going on, which we're gonna be talking about in the episode of NRO uh, Podcast 68. Um, if you're watching NRO Podcast 68 right now, um, you're, you're in, you're in tune for a special treat as we cover this Xbox civil war. We cover this as part of that as well. Um, if you're not watching, um, in a row podcast 68 and you're watching this as an a la carte video, cause we split it off. Um, you're definitely going to want to do that. Wait till the end of this video. You'll see a card. It's going to direct you to, uh, that special episode where cold blood and I I'm on the panel pretty much <laughs> tear this one apart. All right. But with that being said, in order for you to understand what this use is of the Xbox console that still remains, we, we got to do two things. First, we got to tell you how we got here. Then we're going to give you the solution. And then after we do those two things, we're going to come up with our closing. All right. So how did we get here? First and foremost, the problem with Xbox this generation has been they failed in two key areas. Area number one is they failed with the console package. When they were trying to tell you that this console package between Xbox Series S and Series X was so fantastic and people would love it and adore it. And, and, and even Phil Spencer believed that because that's what he sold Sachi and Adela and Sachi's assistant at the time in, in a now public email via the ABK trial, FTC trial. Um, two key things were flawed there. Number one, um, the Xbox Series X, I feel like if it was by itself would outperform the PlayStation 5 routinely. But you can't have a situation with the Series S being a bottleneck and that happens. You should already know that. They should have known that. They didn't learn, mistake number one was basically they didn't learn from the Xbox One era. Now with the Xbox One era, it wasn't Phil Spencer's fault when because the xbox one x didn't perform 
as well as it looked on paper. What had happened was because it was a mid-gen refresh, they had to include all of the games that came prior to the mid-gen refresh. That means supporting the games that were made for the original Xbox One that were developed with the e, the SRAM. See, the Xbox um, OG, well, well, the original Xbox One, its bottleneck was the SRAM because what Xbox was trying to do was try to come up with an efficient way for it to play games and run all these this multimedia stuff. That's what hurt the Xbox when it came to power. And Phil said, well, we're going to get rid of that SRAM, which was, which was a wise move, but it was to no avail because even though the box was more powerful, you really couldn't extrapolate the power of that box because it had to accommodate the games as they were being built with the SRAM, right? So you would think Phil Spencer already having that heartburn would say, okay, we are not going to have multiple boxes where our most powerful box is hamstrung from the potato, right? And and he originally like was, was on the right path. They were going to have xCloud be your entry level or your cheap way to get into ninth generation gaming through Xbox. And then you, you know, you, if you wanted a native console, you would get an Xbox series X. However, when they saw what Stadia was capable of as far as fidelity, performance, and latency, they scrapped those plans. Brad Sams talks about this in a now private video. Um, and we talk about this with our members way back when in a now private video where he had discovered that a lot of developers had gone to Xbox and said, hey, if you do this, where you have this weaker console in the series s it was called lockhart at the time um if you have lockhart with this this bottleneck in the ram then we're just going to scale up from whatever we do with the series s meaning that all that power all that hit room that's produced in the xbox it will not be realized at all right xbox said we don't want that so our entry level solution is x cloud and then they saw stadia and then they brought back because they canceled lockhart and then they brought it back so that was that was foopaw number one. Foopaw number one is not really having a good entry level way to get in here. I think what they should have done is they should have just done with what PlayStation did. PlayStation, what they did was wise. They just took the they took the hit um, in the console production and said, "Look, we're going to give you a hundred dollar cheaper console." We're gonna do that by just taking out the district disk drive bay. Now, taking out the disk drive bay doesn't award them an extra hundred dollars off the bat, but what it does is it eliminates the possibility of there being trades, physical copies being traded or whatever. You gotta buy strictly from the digital store. And then what PlayStation did is they stopped selling digital games in, in retail places. You can only get digital codes for points. But if you wanted a digital game, you had to get it directly from PlayStation, meaning they didn't have to share any of the revenue. So Xbox may have not wanted to go that far, but they I think what they wanted to do was probably come up with a console um, relatively close in power, not with this RAM bottleneck, relatively close in power to the Series X. Just take away the hardware bay, you know what I'm saying? And then get the fruits of the labor back in the software sales and, um, you know what I'm saying? In, in the digital purchases and not have to worry about physical copies and then copies being resold and them not getting any of that revenue, right? Fupa number two is they did not make Game Pass lucrative enough. Like all this would have been pushed by Game Pass. Like everybody would have jumped on Game Pass and said, oh my gosh, you know what I'm saying? This is the value. I get all these wonderful games um, for $10.99 a month. And then this console is only 300. This is great. So not only did they really like put themselves in a bind with the console, but they didn't make Game Pass lucrative enough for the average gamer. Because Why? Because they themselves didn't curate great games. Like we're in year four, year five, right? Of the generation. And now they got games that people are like, hmm, I'm interested in that. Like our own Cold Blood Sensei's talking about, he's interested in Avowed. I mean, look, and I'm interested in Stalker too. This is like, like I said, four or five years after the fact. Where was this stuff at the beginning? 
Where? Where was that? So they didn't have enough stuff in Game Pass to where outside of the pandemic, people would keep coming and buying a swath full of consoles for, during the pandemic, after the pandemic. Xbox saw its heights in console sales this generation. It gave the illusion that it could compete because there weren't enough PlayStation 5s out there, simply put. If there were plenty of PlayStation 5s, this thing would be, at the beginning, this thing would even be worse. It would be even more abysmal. All right? So that's where they messed up. Here's the solution, though, because what's happened is now that Xbox realizes they messed up in their strategy all the way around, they're now trying to abandon the console. They stripped away the console tier for new people, like we said in, 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 the, in the bumper. They've stripped away the console tier for new people when they finally start getting games that could bring people to Game Pass. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is coming day and date to Game Pass. That's, that's a huge deal. So they've raised the price of Game Pass, and then for console gamers only, they stripped away day and date access. They're now selling, they're now running ads, more ads than they are for the console. You don't need a console. They're running that these ads with Fire TV. You don't need a console. And they know that xCloud isn't the best performance. They're not dumb. They see what other cloud services are doing, right? They don't care. That's how bad they want to get people away from, from the console or from console expectations, right? Because there is a solution for your console, but it's going to have to, it's, it's going to take some understanding with you and, and, and some patience and, and the caveat. If you're that diehard of an Xbox fan where you have to play on Xbox, here's what you got to resign to. Number one, they are moving away from the console. So it is in your best interest. It is vital that you buy no more console games native on the Xbox because Sarah Barnes running an exploratory committee right now to try to figure out what to do with their new Xbox, uh, with the Xbox games when they move over to this new device or this new hardware that's likely not going to run like a console. It's just going to be a box to either stream you PC games or you can natively play PC games on a handheld that maybe you can dock and play on the TV. They are moving away from the isolated guardrail console format. So to make that transition less painful for you because there might be games that you don't that don't transfer over or whatever through this exploratory committee to just eliminate that risk stop buying games natively on the xbox well you may be saying well hold on mm2k if i stop buying games natively on the xbox then how can i play games on my xbox how can i play my xbox games on my xbox if i don't have game pass or how can i play third party games here's what you're going to want to do Xbox is already giving you the signal too. Get GeForce Now. Particularly GeForce Now Ultimate. With GeForce Now Ultimate, you will have the ability to not only play your PC Game Pass games, which again, PC Game Pass is only $11.99 and you get Game Pass games day and date there. You get Xbox games day and date. Not only that, but you'll get a slew of the AAA games that come out. Like most of the big banger AAA uh, third-party games come to GeForce now with the exception of Warner Brothers. I don't know what the heck is their problem, but whatever. Screw them. But everybody else is coming to the platform, right? Last but certainly not least, GeForce now is the best way to play your Xbox games. It's better than playing them natively. On the Xbox console, if you use the um, if you use the browser, you're gonna play your games. I believe up to 1440p. The max is right now on via the browser, um, 60 frames per second, if not higher, consistently. And I'm talking about even better than your Series X. Better than your Series X. Like I was showing people how to play Starfield 60 frames plus day and date via GeForce Now on their Xbox before Xbox even supported it natively. That is your holy grail through all this. A, get used to buying your games via PC because that's what Xbox is pushing you towards. C, I mean B, um, get, get, get GeForce Now. 
And right now, GeForce Now Ultimate is running a special. You can get six months of GeForce Now Ultimate, which is normally $89 every six months or $20 a month. You can get six months for $50. $50 for less than the price of a game. You can't beat that with a stick. So with that said, here's the closing. Xbox has made the unprecedented move of doing a full pivot mid-generation. This was only necessary due to the incompetence of the leadership. Nonetheless, if you must engage with Xbox primarily, don't fool yourself. They are out of the console game and they're telling you, they're doing everything to tell you, but tell you. So get with the transition, get your games on PC and play via GFN Ultimate. If that is too much for your console blood, which I can understand, there's only one thing left to do. Get you a PS5. And if you decide to do that, which is a lot more simplified, if you do, I, I believe you won't be sorry. And that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, here's what I think. But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They'll lead you to geeks, cloud dosage, hard knock digital culture and here MM2K gaming. But that's it. Peace. Have a wonderful gaming day.